Well, hello everybody, Bart here. Today is Sunday, beautiful spring day in Indiana, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and it's only early March, so it's reasonably warm, nice weather. I figured uh, a couple things to share with you on the Polski Fiat 126 maintenance and also provide you with some tips and things that I found. Three things we're going to cover today. Item number one will show you, again perhaps, but in more detail, how to set the timing on the car. Item number B, how to grease, properly grease and maintain the, um, the kingpins on the, uh, on the front uh, steering. And then item number three, just a few ideas about uh, corrosion protection and maintenance. Well, actually, let's start with a corrosion protection and maintenance. So, there's, as I mentioned, there's no such thing as a rust-free Fiat. They start to rust even when there is a rain on the forecast, I've heard. So, uh, in order to take care of the corrosion, I really like these rust reformers. So, little chemistry lesson for you. There's two things out there. There are rust reformers and rust converters. Rust converters usually look like milk um, and they're sold like a little bottle. You can apply them with a, with a brush perhaps. And they're based, my understanding, a lot of them are based off of phosphoric acid. And what happens is the ferrous oxide, um, which is basically rust, gets converted, if you will, into phosphorus oxide um, or some, some something that is basically inert to further corrosion, for further oxidation. The second thing, or the other um, thing that you can buy, are these rust reformers, and they're um, uh, based out of, uh, and they're, and they're um, th their active ingredient there is tannic acid. And that's, uh, long story short, both sort of achieve the same effect, which is neutralize the ferrous oxide and prevent the further corrosion from spreading and convert the existing corrosion in something that is not longer oxidizing, no longer corroding further. So I bought this at Harbor Freight Tools for $5 and how this works is basically you can apply this directly onto rust. Now clearly you have to remove the corrosion first to something that is not flaking off and not, not nothing that would, uh, you know, you could just remove it with say a sandpaper and or uh, wire brush, but you don't have to send it down to bare metal. Then you just spray paint this on and that basically um, reforms it and it's ready for further paint. And I had excellent result with them, not only just on the Fiat, but over the years I've been using this product. It kind of finishes into a nice matte black color. You can repaint it, do whatever, and it actually lasts for a long time. So my philosophy has been on cars, especially on these complex angles, is don't kill yourself trying to remove every single inch of the corrosion, especially on the under body, right? Just get it so it's clean, it's uh, grease free, and there's no loose dust and or loose corrosion. And then paint it with this and you'll be pleasantly surprised how well it works. So that's item number one. Item number two is greasing the front suspension. The, um, so the kingpins on the Polish Fiat have two grease points and you should grease them every, I don't know, 5,000 miles or so. In order to do this, you'll have to run over to your automotive department at Harbor Freight or other store. I like Harbor Freight because for a weekend warrior like myself, there is the, the reasonable quality. I bought myself this grease gun and put a red grease, they sell it at Harbor Freight. You can kind of see the color of it. It's their higher end grease. I think it's very suitable for this kind of automotive stuff. And attach this fitting to it. <clears throat> and this will probably run you $15 with a coupon or something. So it's not gonna break the bank. Then next thing you need to do is you need to find a level surface, for the parking brake, and check up the front suspension. And I would suggest that you remove both the front wheels, take the five, extra minutes and remove the five extra minutes one extra minute 30 seconds and remove the both of the wheels it'll really help you then go to your wife and get her best uh, comforter or blanket put it on the ground in front of the car check up the front of the car and I'll show you where those fittings are okay 
because they're not that easy to find. And why they're not easy to find is because most likely your car will have million years worth of grease over the suspension. So what I did one afternoon when I just was antsy and I just had to find something to do is I cleaned all this and you can see now the little fitting, Zerk fitting, right there on the top with a little red grease coming out of it. And that's how the whole thing should look like. But most likely yours will look like you won't be able to even to tell where the wheel stops and the suspension begins because it's going to be covered with crap. Now there's some corrosion on here or whatever, but most it's at least it's clean. And I'll address the corrosion later. It's just surface. It's not a big deal. So you attach that grease gun and have pump and then have somebody else maybe move the wheels back and forth until you'll see grease come out of the bottom here. Now your car might have two of those. There might be a secondary one in the bottom so you might have to do the bottom and the top but the point is the grease should be coming out of here and out of here same thing on the other wheel except the fitting is on the other side so how to do this properly is clean the damn thing first so there's no more caked on grease and then clean it and then once you see the fresh grease coming out just wipe it off so it doesn't attract more uh, dirt and then it's going to make your job easier for the next time and so what I should probably do with this is should apply one of those rust uh, converters, perhaps, with a brush and convert that corrosion here. And then maybe I should repaint it at some point. But look at my front thing. See how I painted it with that spray paint? It looks pretty nice. And that's kind of the finish you'll get. And most importantly, now it's protected and there's going to be no more corrosion with this with this front and this front is notorious for corroding because you know that's where all the water and crap is hitting the front of the car so that's how you would do the front suspension greasing and you should really do this pretty often especially if you drive through waters and the kind of a thing snow okay now let me reset the camera here and let's move on to the ignition system all right the Polski Fiat 126 has a very simple but at the same time easy to maintain ignition system it consists of high voltage coil here and a distributor now there are apparently two versions of this the older ones had actually a rotor and the, and um, uh, yeah basically a distributor uh, with a with a point with a, with a um, connect points were basically located on the circumference but this is a newer style with just a cap <clears throat> so this is still a distributor but it's it doesn't have the rotor system like the older version inside you'll find points that you need to set per the manual and you have to read what the gap is but we're not going to get into this i'm just going to set show you how to do that set up the timing and the silver little cylinder here is a capacitor to prevent uh, this, the sparking that normally occurs um, or uh, basically destroying your um, points um, prematurely. I think they also call it condenser, I believe, but I call it capacitor because that's really what it is. Anyway, um, in order to set a timing on the Fiat, you will need to build yourself this tool, which I think I've showed on the other video. 12 volt bulb. You just took a car bulb. What? solder two wires to it and then connect one point one uh, lead to here and one lead to ground somewhere anywhere uh, I just connected here then you will need a 13 millimeter wrench and that's really it now here's what you'll do make sure okay sorry before I do this make sure the car is neutral and you put the parking brake on and then over here on the timing cover you will see where I will show with the hands marks and then the one that I'm pointing to the one that you can see is 10 degrees top dead center and what you need to do is rotate this wheel with your hand until you see the little notch which I'm showing you right now on the video align right with this 10 degree mark now some cars apparently are slightly different, so check owner's manual, but I think majority of them are now set for 10 degrees. A little early is good too, like 13 degrees I've heard gives you good results. 
but if it's too late closer to the top dead center the car will will be very sluggish and you will, will push on the, on the accelerator pedal and the car will kind of almost have like a delay <clears throat> so that'll be the symptom okay now let me show you how this works in practice so car's neutral parking brakes on turn the ignition to the accessory position right there and if you've set your timing correctly the light should be on as you turn the ignition on but watch what happens as I'm rotating it the light comes off turns off and as I'm approaching as I'm rotating the wheel and I'm turning it clockwise the light will come on and I have mine, mine set like to maybe 11 degrees here before the 10 degree mark and that's good I feel like car is a little bit more responsive um, and how you adjust it is you take the 13 millimeter wrench there is a bolt right there I don't know if you can see it right there you can see it and then you will have to loosen it and then rotate this guy forward and back backwards and forwards until you get that light to come on exactly where you need it and then you tighten it down now be very careful you only move this like a fraction of a degree very small movements so don't go crazy best thing to do is maybe mark it um, so you know where you're starting it off in case you screw something up and then double check make sure just see how minute movements of the wheel and the light comes on and off so it uh, really is a uh, kind of a precision work but once you set it then you'll be uh, in extremely good shape for a long time obviously if you feel adventurous you could always get yourself a strobos stroboscopic lamp or stroboscope and check it dynamically which means you know the engine's running and you then can shine on these marks and they should be um, they should be exactly stationary at 10 degrees or whatever you want it set I don't have a stroboscope you can still buy them at Harbor Freight I almost want to buy one but I did it this way and it seems like the engine's running great the old-fashioned way and I remember when I was growing up in Poland back in the day this was a standard issue on every Fiat 126 owner in other words you made yourself one of those tools as a standard <laughs> equipment and periodically you would check it and adjust it and of course inside of this you can open it up and check the gap uh, on the uh, points and make sure it's set the right way the old school people that would be watching this video they're like yeah we know all about it because that's how the cars used to be in the United States back in the 60s maybe even early 70s but nobody probably 30 years or younger knows what the hell like points and condensers and I know any of this stuff really mean that's why I'm explaining this uh, unfortunately or fortunately depending how you look at it I grew up with this stuff because this is you know the Polski Fiat 126p we're talking 1950s technology this engine comes from Fiat 500 and all this stuff is kind of they all you know been transformed over even though the car was made well into the 80s 90s of course later on they went with an electronic ignition system and everything but uh, you know this 1988 American cars of this vintage I would think they would already have some sort of an electronic system I remember I had a 1988 Pontiac Fiero back in the day and that already had um, a much more sophisticated engine controls so just to give you a comparison where things were but we're talking a car built behind a iron curtain and kind of an old-school technology but you have to admit it's got some advantages meaning that every Kowalski as they say can fix this car successfully in their backyard with tools that came with the car because that 13 millimeter wrench just actually came with a toolbox so that was the beauty of of the design simplicity and I would think reasonable reliability hopefully you enjoyed this video send us your comments thank you for watching